everybody. It's December 17th. Welcome to my top 100 games of all time list. Today we're going through game 36 through 33, and this is part of my 25 Days of Christmas series where we go through all my top 100 games of all time. Uh, down below you can find the link to the playlist where you can find all the videos covering all the games, uh, but today only four games. So, yeah. Let's begin. My number 36 is a game that I played when I went to fourth grade, maybe? I don't really remember, but it's Pokemon Red and Blue, though I had Pokemon Red. It's for the old Game Boy games, or Game Boy machine, whatever you call it, console, handheld. And Pokemon Red and Blue are the first ones in the series. They were the first game that were released, and I remember playing this. Uh, first of all, the commercials back then were awesome. Uh, they were they were real actors, and the first one was a bus with Pokemons on it, and the bus driver went to a dump and pushed or crushed the bus down into a Game Boy, I guess. It became a Game Boy once it was crushed down, and all the Pokemons were stuck in it. It was kind of horrible and frightening and awesome at the same time. But Pokemon is a RPG game, uh, believe it or not, it's an actual... It's an, great RPG game uh, back, well, especially back in the day on the handheld. It's probably the best Game Boy game um, of all time, in my opinion. For the old Game Boy, that is. You could say Tetris, but I'm not going to say Tetris, I'm going to say Pokemon. And you are uh, no, you're not actually Ash, you're Red. You're Red and you, you go on this journey to become the greatest Pokemon trainer or master. Actually, you, the first quest that you get is to find or catch and find all the Pokemon. The all 152 were actually in the first game. Um, and that's it. And you go around this world, you capture Pokemon, you train them, you teach them attacks, you fight against other trainers, you go to these gyms where there are Pokemon trainers that you can... Oh, hold on. <clears throat> so. I'm playing Prison Architect while recording this, and suddenly I see that a fire happened in one of my kitchens, and I had to go there and fix that, so... <laughs> That's also a game that was on my top 100, by the way, so... Yeah. Damn it. My prison! Good thing I noticed it. What if that just would have burnt the whole thing down? Oh, that would be horrible. Anyway, my number 36 is Pokémon Red and Blue. I had the red version. The difference between them, the difference between them was that you had... Uh, two different, uh, or not two different, but a few different Pokemon in each, so that you actually had to either have both games and a cable, so that you, or two Game Boys, so that you can trade in between the games, or a few, or trade with friends, and that was basically the idea of the game, uh, or the two different games to be more social, and that this was one of the first game where you actually felt like having a Game Boy versus cable is actually worth it now, or Link cable, or whatever they were called, so. Number 36, Pokemon. My number 35 is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. The first of the games that just got me into this awesome, awesome game series where you play Phoenix Wright, Defense Attorney, and the game is a click adventure, a graphic novel kind of thing, where you go through different crime scenes. It's always murder, I think. Pretty much always murder. Uh, murder cases that you go through and you go to these crime scenes you interview people you try and find clues and then you go to the courtroom to try and defend your defendant and by interviewing people and cross-examining or cross whatever it's called and uh, trying to well basically make them tell the truth or say the wrong thing so that you can uh, say objection and then make them cry I think that happens quite a few times that people cry in that game. And these games have great stories. Uh, even though, even even the small cases, like every case in these games are very different, but they end up having the same main story, which is just an amazing feeling. So you should definitely look at the, or take a look at the Phoenix Wright games if you enjoy these kind of novelish games. So there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of story, and I just love it. I, I think these these are basically these could replace books when you try to sleep. Except you won't be able to sleep because you just want to continue playing. My number thirty-five, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. My number thirty-four is a game written. Uh, 
The story is written by the Final Fantasy creator, I believe, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure about this. And uh, that's a game for the Xbox 360. I think this was the only game that that company made. I'm not sure, though. That is Lost Odyssey. You are taking the role of Kame or Kaim. I don't remember exactly how that's pronounced. And you are an immortal. And you have lost your memory. And the world... I don't remember the overall story of this. I just know that you lost your memory. And you start off by killing a lot of people. And realizing that, oh, you can't actually die. I think you can die if you're, like, if you lose all your blood and that kind of... Blah. Uh, kind of thing. But throughout the game... The one thing that I remember strongly is that throughout the game, you unlock stories from your past. And these are written novels that you actually, or tiny short stories, that you get to read. And they they have animation, not animation, they have like backgrounds and sounds and music that comes with them. And you can read through them and it's just an amazing feeling. And you get so much depth to the character you're playing. And the gameplay is fun. The, it's a JRPG. The fighting is turn-based, if I remember correctly, uh, much like the old Final Fantasy games. And this game surprised me because I looked at the cover, I looked at the box, and I was like, it "Looks like an okay JRPG." And then I played it, and I was like, "I can't let this game go. I really enjoy it." And obviously, it's my 34, so clearly it's a good game. And I can't believe. It's one of those gems for the Xbox 360 that not a lot of people have played, and I wish they would release this for PC. I don't know if they ever did, but if they do, I'll definitely look into that. Um, yeah, Lost Odyssey, my number th number 34, written by the Final Fantasy creator. I'm 99% sure about that, and uh, just a great game. If you have a 360 and you see this game, it's not that expensive even. Go get it, definitely. My number 33 is also the third game in a series of games, and that is Star Ocean 3. In Star Ocean 3, I don't remember the character name, that you play this main character with blue hair, because anime, uh, or manga, I guess, and uh, it's a JRPG, did I mention that? Where you... The main thing of the JR or the Star Ocean series is the fact that you have this kind of sci-fi setting, but you end up in a world or a place where where you have to use swords and close combat and everything is very fantasy around you though the main concept of the whole story is sci-fi which is a very very interesting thing so you actually land no it's not in this game I always mix a few things from the third and the fourth game together when it comes to the Star Ocean series and it's in one of the games you actually land on a planet with your ship and you have to make the ship invisible because otherwise people would be like oh, it's a big metal bird go 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 but it's a great game series. And the third game, I do, ah, I remember the overall story concept, but I don't remember where it starts off. And I wish I could tell you, but I don't want to spoil the story. But let's just say that the third game, it's such a weird ending, and it's such a weird, all the Star Wars games have great, great stories, by the way. And they're always like, what? As soon as you realize. And, man, I really... Okay, I'll, I'll mention a spoiler right now from the Star Wars 3 series, or the Star Wars 3 game. You actually realize that you are part of a game. And uh, you might say, well, it is a game. But, yes, you and the other characters, or the story revolves around a lot of people appearing with a lot of power and weird powers and strengths that you can't understand. So you're trying to learn more about this. I think it's so long since I played this game. Uh, but as you learn more about these people, you realize that they are actually invading your world in a virtual way because you are a game. These people tell you that you're actually not real. You are programmed and you are a vacation kind of thing for them, like a recreation game for them. So they visit your world, they can do whatever they want, but everything in this world is, it's an AI that controls this world. So everything in this world is created by an AI and in that sense created to simulate life and ideas and original thoughts. And the story 
it ends up in such an interesting place. You actually re leave this virtual world because you manage to build a machine that mind blowing. You build a machine that can take you out of the virtual world into the real world when you learn about the people that enter your world as players. And then it's all about, you know, are we real? Are we really can we really defend our worlds? Should we do it? Because I think they're shutting some of the planets or the worlds down in the AI system because they're not popular or something like that. I don't remember exactly. And that is what's happening. Worlds are disappearing. I think. Man, I can't remember all the details. But it's a really interesting story. And yeah, Star Ocean series overall is just great. Definitely look into it. And uh, yeah, my number 33, Star Ocean 3. The till the end of time, or till the end of time, the fourth one. Lost Hope, I think, is this name. I, I never remember the. Till the end of time is this one. Yes, right. Till the end of time. <laughs> Makes sense, seeing as the world is virtual and ending. Right. Everybody, that was it for today. My four games for December 17th, 36 through 33. Um, all Japanese games? Yeah. All Japanese games, I believe. Uh, all Japanese games and pretty much all RPG games. Oh, uh, except for Phoenix, Phoenix Wright, even though... Ah, no, it's not an RPG, it's a novel game. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, remember to check the links down below, or the link down below, and the links about my face once they're added to the video, to see the whole playlist and all the games that I've covered in my top 100 games of all time. I will see you again tomorrow on December 18th, where we'll go through 32 to 28, 29, 32, 31, 30, 29, yes, 29. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed, and have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh God, maybe this is just a game.